Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Hey everybody. Well, I am kind of literally throwing this video together as quickly as possible. Number one, because I'm not going to have a chance to do it. But number two, some of you still may be on the fence about getting one of these Vanderbilt Commodores. And uh, well, I've got one, so I thought I would show it off real quick and tell you my experiences in the short amount of time I've had it. Um, and that way you can make a decision. And if we look pretty much all of these, I'm not going to go through the sounds but as you can see, they're pretty much the same as all the other Paragon 4s. There's nothing surprising or particularly interesting. I think here it should all be the same. So if you've heard one, you've heard this one. I don't know if there's anything in the operating manual that we need to see. There is a separate set of trailing trucks. Not sure what that's for. I'll do it when I do a longer video with this one and the other. Okay, we got replacement. I, I don't know where those go. We'll have to figure that out later because I've literally got an appointment in about 45 minutes and I've got to make this quickly. So here it is for you. The This is the one that comes from Train World and I've got a bunch of cars to put behind it. So I've been collecting these for about a year now, something like that. I, I always like them, but wasn't quite sure. So we've got these, including a nice caboose, I guess that'll go behind it. I guess it needs a caboose, but that's not all because I have got a bunch of these Walters ones as well. Here they are, and they're unbuilt, so I'm going to have to build them. I actually built them last night. I was up till 3 a.m. building these. In fact, I didn't build all of them. I think I'm four short. So I've got these, and you're like, well, really? No, I've got even more than that. I've got more, more Walters. So I've got a ton of these Walters. So these are going to be the most consistent ones. Well, right off the bat, there was already an issue, and that was the traction tire wasn't on. And I had kind of noticed it. It had already come off. So it's always something with Broadway Limited, right? So I had to go ahead and go in here and do this. And since I've done this and I took the time to film it, I'm going to go ahead and put a separate video up for how to do this. This isn't the time or place because, again, this just has to be a quick overview just in case you're thinking of getting this but you're not sure if you want to get it so you want to see mine and if I can do this for you really quickly that's fine so if you want I, I just took all this stuff apart and then let's pull this and then we'll take a look at the actual driving gear here so we can see if it's metal or if it's plastic or what so we'll just take that out of there I don't think we have to pull this all the way off I think we can get away with just kind of loosening that there we go and there we go it is a plastic main gear and we reset the traction tire in there so let's see if I can show it to you. There we go. So it's not a brass gear or anything. It's plastic, which should be nice in terms of quietness. In terms of longevity, I haven't heard of too many problems with people losing their driving gear from Broadway Limited. And hopefully by the time this goes, there'll be an easier way to 3D print one or something like that. So there you go. Plastic driving gear. Uh, not surprising. Let's get all this button back up. And like I said, I'll make a separate video on how I actually did this, because this is probably going a little bit too quick. Let's take the weight on this. And what do we got here? It is die cast, by the way. So there we go, 26.3 ounces. Uh, for us here in the United States, that is one pound, 10 ounces. And for everybody else in the rest of the world, this thing is 745 grams, pretty beefy, not bad whatsoever. All righty. Let's get, yeah. All right, let's move on. Here it is. So I'll do a walk around. As you can see, it's a die cast and it's a tad grainy. Doesn't look too bad. Although I think, you know, compared to the turbine, maybe that one should have been die cast and this one in brass hybrid. It's a bit of a bizarre decision. But except for the graininess, I can't really tell that there was any difference. As you can see here, they kind of modeled the waviness of the sheet metal, which I think is pretty nice. Um, I think a lot of you, you know, if you have this, you're probably going to want to weather it. It looks pretty plasticine. Um, it's bright. I don't weather it. I'm still okay with that. But yeah, and again, I these train rolled ones always come out before the main ones. I'll probably get my Vanderbilt tomorrow, and I'll do these side by side. These three little vents here on top open, except in the middle vent, I can see the wiring 
for the cab light, which comes on when it's stopped and then goes off when it starts again. So that's pretty nice. The turbine didn't have um, these little cab doors there, the, the vents, I should say, that opened. Here's the driving set. I think those look pretty nice. And it looks a little bit chunky and it's a little bit too shiny, but uh, it's okay. Um, when it's running from three feet, I don't think I'm really gonna notice that. Not a lot of details per se, but I don't think it necessarily needs them since this is a shrouded streamlined train. If you can look there, the cab, the joints are a little bit inconsistent on each side, but it doesn't look bad. It's not distracting and you can tell everything's at least straight. So I appreciate that. We go around the side here and again, it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of a slab sided model. So there's not gonna be a lot of intricacies to see because, you know, that's how it's supposed to look. You can see the cab figures and the cab light on. Go around here. Um, yeah, I, again, kind of at this speed and the fact that now I've got about 30 minutes before I have to get out of here. I'll just let you take a look at it as I go around. Of course, very nice, crisp, clear lettering. The tender has a single light on it that lights up when it's in reverse. And when it's in forward, it will go out. That looks good, and they both have kind of that nice, natural, warm light that Broadway Limited chooses to use, so I don't have any problems. There are die-cast details on the cab, but there are no painted details whatsoever. It's kind of weird. It's like so many people wanted this, but why didn't they make this one brass hybrid? It's kind of curious. I'm not quite sure. All right, it does have a built-in capacitor, like I think all Paragon 4 should have, and as per usual, it only holds up the sound and the motion and not the lights and the smoke in it. So here we go. It stops after about two some odd seconds and the sound goes after four. So that's about typical for Broadway Limited. After a run-in, this is what um, Notch 1 out of 128 looked like. Uh, it's not bad. It's, I haven't come to expect a whole lot from Paragon 4, but it's pretty smooth. A little bit faster on crawl than I would like, but that's pretty much typical for Paragon 4. Not bad, but not great. I know a lot of people have specifically replaced theirs just so they could get a better crawl out of their Paragon locomotive. So hopefully that's something they'll change in Paragon 5. But it's not bad. Uh, you can live with this, right? Let's check the coupler height, and coupler height is dead on ski. That's pretty good. They did a good job there, so it shouldn't be any problem, so as long as your actual cars are dead on also. All right, now the big test is, since the capacitor doesn't hold up the light, we can tell if it's having problems with my track, and trust me, if it runs on my track, it'll run on anybody's track, because you'll see the light flicker, and that's been really the bane of almost all Broadway Limited locomotives so far, except for the S2 turbines. And look at that, that's a big problem area is right around that curve, no flickering there. And since the rear light doesn't light up, I have to follow this around the front. So sorry, this is a little bit herky-jerky because I have to look at the headlight. And once it gets past that turn, everything else is generally okay, except for coming into this turn. And what do you know? They have actually created a locomotive that runs all the way around my track. Well, that's great. All right, will it pull all of these cars? And the answer is no, no, it will not. It will not pull all these cars. Now these all, I've changed them all to metal wheels, so they should be free rolling, but for what it's worth, the Walters and a couple are others are pretty heavy. And I have horseshoe turns that are 33 inches. So if you can look, it's backed up on the turn there. So this is asking quite a bit. Um, yeah, so it's not gonna pull this many, at least on my track. So just for the sake of continuity, let's pull out everything except for the Walters and see if this will pull those. So here we go. The Walters, they're gonna make it. Is it gonna do it? It is slipping a bit. It's slipping. So, no. No, it is not going to pull the Walthers. Um, so, hmm, interesting issue. But I thought to myself, maybe there's something I can do. 
and I actually went around and cleaned my entire track. Cleaned the whole thing to see if that would work better. Okay, so yeah, let's try it with a clean track. I actually went over it twice and actually kind of cleaned off the traction tires too, just in case it had picked up any garbage. And what do you know, we've got it, we've got it. Yep, so <laughs> if your track's clean, again, these are actually pretty heavy cars. I haven't weighed them, but they're pretty heavy. So looks like I'm just going to keep the Walters for now and use the other ones and something else. So here we go, it actually, runs through just fine yay so well, hauls pretty decent amount you know you may have better luck if you have lighter cars or cars with plastic wheels maybe since i'm using roll trues and they're fairly heavy um, but one thing about these walters is they definitely don't line up perfectly color wise right there's a darker a darker gray and a darker red it's a slightly cooler red so if you want something that lines up perfectly i had so many of these i figured we could try them but the problem is, is i don't necessarily know who built these so i'm going to show you the undersides and in the comments you can help all of us determine which ones are which so this is number one and number one obviously is too bright the gray is almost white and the red is a very bright red so again here's the underside maybe you can help tell everybody which one number one is all right, so, but they're not bad, you know. I mean, they're brighter, and at least they have somewhat the same warmth. Number two, again, I don't know who made this. Pretty intricate underside details. So maybe, again, in the in the comments, if you know, please let us know. And it's close, right? It's a little bit brighter. The gray is a little bit brighter, and the red is a little bit brighter. But it's closer than the Walters, that's for sure. All right, let's try number three. And number three, I think, is Athern Blue Box, right? Because it has the weight. So this is an Athern Blue Box. Let's put that up to it. And what do you know? It looks like the Athern Blue Box is very close. Very, very close. Um, so that's something to consider. If you want cars for this particular, um, the freight system, that look exactly the same. This Atherin is very close, but I actually have a second Atherin here. And again, I'm pretty sure I'm right, right? It has an exposed plate in those coupler covers. It's a darker, so, and it has a black roof, which I don't think matches up all that well at all. But if these are the ones you can get your hands on, they're not too bad. Let's see, I've got another one here. It's number five, and again, I don't know who makes this either. It's made in China, that doesn't tell me anything so i don't know if this is a taiko manchua we'll put this down and again it's a little brighter and yeah it's it's definitely a little bit brighter but um it, it lines up fairly decent in some ways and now number six so let's get this in there there we go this one is definitely pretty far off and again i'll show you the underside since i don't know who made this um, but maybe you can tell us all down in the comments. I'm sure everyone would appreciate it, and it's really not even close at all, right? I mean, it's sort of, in a lot of ways, the farthest off from everything we've seen thus far. So if you want something to line up pretty much exactly or as close as possible, it's number three, which looks like an Atherin, but, it, but there are at least two different Atherin versions. But um, from a color point of view... That's gonna be the one, if you can find them, that lines up best here. So there you go, hopefully that helped you out if you're wondering which brand to purchase to make these look right in. Yeah, that would, that's still closer, it just has the black roof, which I don't think matches up aesthetically. So definitely here the winner is this Atherin, at least I'm sure, I'm fairly sure it's an Atherin. If I'm wrong, please let me know down in the comments. And I think that one looks the best. The fact that this locomotive runs around my track without any kind of continuity problems is amazing, but you knew there had to be something because that's Broadway Limited, and I was hoping it was just limited to the traction tire that was coming off, but it's not. The smoke unit in this works in terms of producing smoke, but the fan is bound, and I can hear it in there with the sound off. I can hear it buzzing, which means it is working, but it's not spinning, and because of that, it's not producing any kind of puff 
And that's a real bummer, but it, I guess at least it hasn't burned out. And so what I might do actually is if I think I can get the top shell off without too much difficulty, I might try to go ahead and repair this one myself. Um, I had another one. It was one of those Jeevos where the fan was obviously straining a little bit because it was probably brushing up against the housing or something like that, and it wasn't working as well. Well, again, this one, I can hear it buzzing when I turn off the sound, but it, it clearly, and it never changes its pace. It never, usually when you have a fan and you turn off the sound, you can kind of hear it spooling up every time it's supposed to puff. So there you go. Uh, I've, I've actually got 15 minutes to get out of here and get to my appointment so i hope this helped you it's a very cool model you know i'll talk more about it as soon as i get my other vanderbilt commodore um, it's very cool there's no doubt about it um, is it without flaw well it's i think especially since people have been waiting for this right there was supposed to be a paragon 3 version of this and then they canceled it it never came out so now we have the paragon 4 in fact i had pre-ordered one of the paragon 3 ones and then they canceled it, so they gave me my money back or whatever, or the deposit I put on it. And then now this one comes in. And this one is the Train World exclusive. I ordered both, but this one came in first. And the, the Blue Goose, the Baltimore and Ohio Blue Goose tank job that came in um, also came in earlier than just the regular Blue Goose, which isn't quite as bad of a tank job, but it's still a tank job. But this one... Uh, yeah, it's it's running well. If it wasn't for that smoke unit, I would be perfectly happy. But the fact that they created one that goes all the way around my track without any kind of electrical glitches is uh, actually a big success for Broadway Limited because only the S2 has really been able to do that thus far. So again, if I can go in and kind of get this smoke unit unstuck, I will do that. And if I do that, I will make a video on how I did it. Maybe that'll help people. I hope, uh, you know, I, I don't think it'll be too bad. I, hopefully I won't void the warranty by doing that. But there you have it. It's running. I'll let this run out for you. And like I said, I'll do a more detailed review when my other Commodore Vanderbilt gets in. I wanted to get this out for people who may be on the fence about this or they may be worried about whether Broadway Limited has cleaned up their act or if they have another dud here. Well, this one looks pretty good, again, except for that smoke unit issue. So there you have it. I'll let this run out for you. I've got to get to my appointment, but I appreciate you tuning in. If you like this, please like it, um, subscribe, and uh, comment on it. I, I'm sure everyone would like to hear what you have to say, especially after having to wait so long for this thing to come out. All right. Happy model railroading. Take it easy. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye for now.